Can Godzilla fly? No. Neither can King Kong, by the way. <laughs> this is my follow-up. <laughs> Brunch! Hit it, boys! Move over, Chet Hanks. The internet has a new idol. Who is the ne- internet's new idol? What were we just talking about? I don't even remember. Oh, uh, Triscuits? No, we were talking about Triscuits. Talking about a banger of a tweet I had. Like ben seven Affleck? Years we're always ago. talking about Ben Affleck. We were talking about Affleck. We were talking about whether or not we should do a joint DD Perks account. <laughs> yep, yep. What else were we talking about? Who just became a billionaire? Ah, Kim Kardashian. Well, we were going to lead with that, but not anymore because nope. fired Paul Pierce oh, is yes. a whole dang mood, vibe, whatever the hell you want to call it. I didn't even watch that Paul Pierce video. To be honest, I, I, it doesn't sound like it's for me. They were yeah. like, it's a video. There's a bunch of like dancing and like they're smoking. They're having a good time and everything. I don't do good times. But <laughs> since being fired, Paul Pierce has been a party. A lot of, like, living my best life videos. Yeah, I think that uh, people love to rally around somebody that they think has been wronged. Um, and, like, that happens a lot, especially in, quote-unquote, cancel culture. Mm-hmm. But, like, when when they think that somebody got the raw end of a deal, they're all like, let's go to ride for this person. And I think that people are down to ride for Paul Pierce and down to ride for a good time. Yeah, Paul, Paul Pierce has never really come off. I mean, Paul Pierce historically has been a sympathetic figure Mm -hmm. like got stabbed while he's playing like that was like a really serious thing well not while he was playing but like no yeah yeah. (laughs) that that was a very playing that would be like the movie that i reference sometimes i always forget the name of it the uh, the football player player that got shot (laughs) who runs down the field shooting guy i'm like i don't know just try to have someone like do an illegal block in the back or something right. and just He's... hope the ref looks the other way. <laughs> right. We can do this without killing people. I always forget the name of that movie. Is it called The Last Son? I have no idea. Every time I look it up, damn it, Any DJ, given son. The Last hey. Son. Oh, my God. That brought up my search history, which made me want to bring up something else. The, the, I Now I have to, go again, type uh, movie football shoots... It always comes up on autocomplete. Football player shoots tacklers. The last Boy Scout. Well, that's that just took a turn into a. a th- that doesn't make I, sense. I don't. I mean, I would I like to know the connection there. Maybe this is set in the future, and the Boy Scouts is has been shuttered. This was the last person welcomed into the Boy Scouts, and then they quit the or they shut down the Boy Scouts. Pandemic hit. Tough times, Boy Scouts had to close, and this guy was the last one. Alternate theory. What if uh, this is a movie from the future, and the Washington football team named their their team the Boy Scouts? The Washington Boy Scouts. And then this guy is, might be the last, or maybe the the other team is the, the Boy Scouts, and he just shoots them all, and there's only one left. So the last Boy Scout is the lone survivor. The lone survivor of the uh, the the football field shooting. I mean, if you are returning a kick, and in your if you're returning a kick, and your life depends on it, because that's what happens. The beginning of this movie, I've, for some reason, I've seen the beginning of this movie on TV a thousand times. He's sitting in the locker room, and he gets a call, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna kill you if you don't score a touchdown or something." So, and he's on drugs, and it's a whole thing. And so he's returning the kick and he shoots people as he's running down the field. If your life depends on it, and we're not saying that like you want to take these guys out, but if your life depended on it to return a kick and you're a professional athlete, how many people are you legitimately worried about? Because I think this guy shoots a bunch of people. Well, I mean, at most 11. Uh, obviously (laughs) if that number went higher than 11 then i guess it depends on the quality of your teammates like you're only as good as the blocking in front of you that's true i'm sure that's what he said in the press conference afterwards when they were like i don't think he made the press conference (laughs) like well julianne moore is the reporter (laughs) nine uh Uh, team sport only that's right i was i was hoping to only have to shoot one or two but you know miss a few missed assignments a couple missed blocks oh my god this is the weirdest thing about this why do we talk about this movie so much? 
The first sentence of The Last Boy Scout's Wikipedia page is, The Last Boy Scout is a 1991 American buddy action comedy oh my directed God. i would not have seen this coming it stars bruce willis and damon waynes and then uh a bunch of other people do we gotta do a, we, we might have to do a what's cooking on this movie what's cooking last boy Scout? yeah yeah i think that would be fair is there a do we understand fair use yet um uh, no definitely not but just say, I, I think that like if it's fair use on a private youtube video maybe we might be all right i mean the the video won't be monetized right that's what i'm saying like as long as we just use it for like private content and not for distribution or whatever yeah it might be okay have we ever talked about my uh streaming idea of uh listening to music on streaming just see what we can get away with yes Really short clips. Really, really short clips. Yes. But you, you also like immediately backtracked on that idea and you were like, oh, we, well, I don't want to do something that'll just get us sued. <laughs> this, I think, would be fine. I think that it, I mean, it would just legitimately be the only th- song I can think of that I really want to use is Crazy. You know that song? Dave Matthews Band? Dave Matthews Band. Yeah. He says, crazy what song is that uh ants that's not ants marching that's uh that's crashing to me crashing to me okay no that's crazy oh really i, I didn't know that th- song's called i mean he says crazy so many times you go oh, 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 crazy i think i don't know why i did, did eddie vetter there yeah but i think that's i mean that did a better job of bringing back the uh the thing to me yeah i, I just know like that the, the pickup of the chorus uh, he does like a oh, no, no, no. Crazy, thinking, da, da. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Yeah, I think it is called crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good song. Yeah. Man, all Dave Matthews Band so- Dave songs Matthews are the same. Extre- <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, extremely solid. Yeah, yeah, but like they all so- they're all the same. I think that now I would go to a Dave Matthews Band concert after years and years of fighting it, because. Again, we talked about this on the stream. Like, there's just like certain people that you're like, I'm just not this person. It's no longer cool anymore. Like, that's why I would go. Same. That's why I went to a Matchbox 20 concert. (laughs) Right. I I was like, I can't go to this Dave Matthews Band concert because I'm not cool. Mm -hmm. And all the cool kids like this. I'll tell you. Checking out Rush. Going to the Matchbox 20 concert was a a time of my life. Front row seats of the lawn. Just sat (laughs) right up front on the lawn. That, like,. What a weird thing. Adults get in the cheap seats, mm-hmm. hanging in the back, and it was great. We had all the space we wanted. They What was the best part of that concert? Uh, the f- parking attendant taking pictures of us in the parking lot oh, yeah, and just right. putting on a fucking photo shoot. We were heavy into photo shoots back then. But like that wasn't even a photo shoot by our own request. We were like, yo, can you just take a picture of us? Oh, and yeah. that this dude was like, I got you. And he took like low angles high angles he was like pose this way pose yeah. this way i think we were like on top of like a 1997 buick lesabre at mm-hmm. one point we were just like doing like um spread i am pretty sure i was like yeah let's do it on other cars let's not <laughs> yeah, do it on our own vehicles right. people can look at our uh, <laughs> at our license plates um we also do you remember what we did for that show uh we got beers oh, oh yeah <laughs> That's it. Is that what you're going to say? Our next episode is the, we'll have the bonus episode Friday and uh, that's it for this episode. We, we're going to skip the Godzilla stuff. Shout out Ballsy and Keeps. Those are our reads for today, but I feel that that was, uh, you got the question right. It's a good place to leave off for the episode. No. In addition to getting beers, we did do that. Very good memory. Mm -hmm. We made made custom Rob (laughs) Thomas shirts. (laughs) <laughs> i'm like, so into pa- making custom things for one-time use that and also just like a very specific idea like those were the the the, the most niche t-shirts Definitely. ever uh mine was the picture of sinbad's face mm-hmm. and it said rob thomas is my bitch correct and Did yours yours was <laughs> yours was Thomas the Tank Engine, but it just said Rob, and then it was a picture of Thomas the Tank Engine. Very close. It was Robert Barone riding Thomas the Tank <laughs> Engine, and I think it said Robert Thomas. I I think no, I think no, I think, I think that Robert it just Thomas. said I think it just said Rob, 
Oh, might it? I I think that I think that uh, maybe the, the the Rob Thomas was stacked in t- on two lines so that the Rob was huge and then the Thomas was a little bit smaller underneath it. But God, those were some good ass shirts. Do you, I still have mine. Do you have yours? I definitely do. Let me see. Let me see um, what these shirts looked like because they were. Yeah, the- that was a very very good time. Okay, so yeah, it said Rob. Rob Thomas, and in Show the, to the middle. People. Okay, there you go. Oh yeah, and then there's the uh, the tank engine right in the middle of the of the O. <laughs> it's so good. It's insane. I'll drop that in so it's a clearer picture. But man, we look like unbelievably different people. And yeah. by we, I mean you look pretty similar. You you do look quite younger. I look like an absolutely. That was just back when I was just a guy with a skinnier face and less hair. Mm-hmm. How boring. Terrible. Yeah. I got longer hair. I'm a skinnier person. But overall, I've always looked the same. Shit. What were you, why were we talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Paul Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Pierce is currently given zero Fs. And, uh, and good, good for him. I wonder, did he intentionally get fired? I don't know, he, like, quite possibly. To get out of his contract or something? I don't. I don't understand why he would, unless he just like wanted to stop working. Which maybe he didn't want to do the work today. <laughs> That's right. Um, I don't know. Like I, it, it's a weird situation because like, yes, that's a, a, such a lame reason to fire somebody. You could have just given him like a like a two week suspension and nobody would have batted an eye. But maybe ESPN was trying to get out of the contract, and maybe Paul Pierce was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. But I also think that like. When you're when you're in the media and you're like a personality and like upholding a brand, I guess it's probably not the best look to go on Instagram Live with like and just like be like, "Yo, here are some strippers." I don't know. Yeah, it's just I could see it from both ways, but I think it's it's lame from ESPN's and Paul Pierce, underrated NBA player, right? Would you say underrated? Ten time All Star, NBA champion, Finals MVP. I don't. I'd say so. I don't think so. I'm kidding. Okay. I'm absolutely kidding. I didn't know if they. I didn't know if you were going because towards the, the underrated conversation yes. is back, and it's trying to kill me, and it probably will. That'll probably be what uh, finishes me off. People saying things are underrated just because they want to say, "Hey, I like this thing." We had this conversation off the pod. I mean, we've had this conversation on the pod before, but we were talking about it in the group text with Jeff, and Jeff raised a very good point. Like people just have the need on the internet to contextualize something they can't qualify why they like something right they can't just say hey i like the bruins they have to say hey we need to talk about how the bruins are underrated yeah or how the bruins are this just say that you like something right you don't need to you don't need to like provide a gateway into talking about something that you like yeah let's make a rule for movies because this popped up because um one of the barstool guys wrote that all right. Uh, the nice guys. Yeah. Nice guys was underrated, and no. Well, I My mean, God. at one point it was underrated. Probably. We need to set parameters for audience score for something to be underrated because underrated means people don't think of it highly. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So the big the big argument and differentiating thing here is underrated versus underappreciated. Yeah. Because. And I guess there is a uh, some gray area between the two, but like it, for the case of the nice guys, I think anybody who's seen it liked it, and yes. ever nobody has ever like seen it and been like, eh, not that good. So in that case, it's it's always been properly rated by people who are exposed to it. But I do think that a, a lot of the times when people talk about underrated, they're talking about uh, it doesn't have the exposure, it doesn't have. The um, like the We're mass cons- the mass consumption, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, so if people have seen if if you've heard of it and people like it, I think that should be like the easy way to quickly disqualify something as being underrated. I just googled, for example, most underrated rock songs to see what would come up, mm-hmm. and number one on whatever list came up was "Stone Cold Crazy" by Queen, and I think. People have heard that song, and people know who Queen is, and 
that's a beloved thing. You, I think that if you want to say like, hey, this is an underrated song, I'd like to have not heard it before. Right? Or if like, hey, this is an underrated movie, it's a movie that you haven't already seen. Yeah, but what if you're talking about like if it like a underrated song, like you think, I guess it's like just a, it's always just a matter of like subjective opinion, but like. If you're gonna call a song underrated, you're. you're I, I'm guessing that you're trying to say like this should be considered one of the best songs of all time, but right. it's really not. Or yeah, it's slept on, slept right. on in some way, shape, form. And obviously, you can say like, hey, you know what's an underrated Bieber song? And there you're qualifying. You're saying among the most famous songs in the world, this isn't quite as famous as I would like it to be. Mm-hmm. But man, yeah, people will just be like, I don't know. I'm gonna tweet right now. I'm gonna say that. You did send out a, a brunch tweet about underrated yeah. earlier today, and uh, I don't know if you uh, necessarily got the responses that you were hoping for. Yeah. With the uh, f- hey, uh, please R R T if you believe Florence Pugh is underrated. What happened? Did anyone did, did no I th- touch it? I think uh, I think somebody. The one response that I saw was like, "This is an underrated opinion." Really? <laughs> yeah. So I just tweeted it. I wrote up a joke tweet that I can't even get my fingers to send because I know I'm gonna hate myself for it but oh my god this is gonna get the douchiest responses uh people gotta stop underrating florence pew rt if you agree yeah, and then tweet. the first response is an underrated psa <laughs> an underrated <laughs> psa uh should i tweet this System of a Down was so <laughs> underrated. You're like the biggest it, No, because it's just going to ruin the rest of the podcast. You're going to be monitoring the responses and just I being like, Ugh. Like, dude, totally. <laughs> Chop yeah. Suey is a sick song. <laughs> yeah, it's going to t- completely drain your energy for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> Don't do it. So I'm going to tweet, just letting you know, I thought about tweeting System of a Down is underrated. Just to see what you idiots would respond and you I'm know, already judging you. You know what's an underrated tweet sent during the podcast? What? Uh, oh. Hit him with that zip zap yeah, zorp. Yeah, you trying to cough Eve and she hit you with that zip zap zorp. Yeah. Just the nonsense. Completely underrated. Nonsense tweet that t- went totally underrated. Nobody ever. Nobody's ever uh, talked about it or referenced it again. There was never attention dr- drawn to it. But uh, while we're talking about System of a Down being underrated, let's just talk about System of a Down for a second because I started listening to them again recently. I know that they were super duper popular, absolutely not underrated, but they were awesome. Were you a System of a Down guy? Nope, don't even I couldn't even name one System of a Down song other than Chop Suey, which you just mentioned. I have I had no You're idea. You're so young, man. I'm so that, I'm, I'm also so students? stupid. What? I would <laughs> One of the things I wanted to bring up on this uh, episode, I was like, how do I preface this? And then I was like, I guess it would be that you and I take turns being the dumb one between us. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think, and I don't want people to answer this because they'll just... It depends like, on the subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was like, yeah, I'm so, yeah, there's, I'm so there's always dumb. And then I was like, if I bring this to Pete, he doesn't know it either. <laughs> He's just as dumb. There is... A- always a dumb person on this podcast at least usually one. there's two yeah um but yeah there's always a stupid person which rules um the age difference what is it four years three three we're we're june babies yeah um 88 you're what 91 so four years five yeah yeah nine <laughs> julianne moore you ever see that movie yes so you missed so you kind of missed System of a Down. System of a Down was a uh, is an Armenian American alternative metal band. Oh, I mean, there I missed all metal bands. N- I've did, not listened to a single metal band ever. So did you not experience uh, the new metal no. wave? Like I, I'm so like completely Korn, no System of a Down, complete, Limp Bizkit. I mean, Limp Bizkit, I have some exposure to. Yeah, uh, but like. Not even in on like Metallica growing up, none of that. So Metallica for '90s kids, you could miss out on that if you wanted because their their apex was '91. But if you were like if you played guitar or you were into heavy stuff, in that, if, right? Like you you, you talked about this many times, it. right? You're just like. But it wasn't Metallica has never goes away because people who get into like that kind of music are like Constant. getting into me- Metallica every year. Right. Every right. They black every cycle constantly yeah. goes uh, goes platinum. 
but that's nuts to me. System of a Down was like my sister, my or my sisters were huge into them. Everybody liked System of a Down. Hmm. It was the weirdest thing because I was a kid that was into heavy stuff like that, and then their second album came out, and I'll you, you should listen to it for a little homework. Everybody loved them. Sounds like more uh, they more were like content the for the they were uh, like the band that everybody loved. Okay, sounds like more content for the uh, As Heard on Brunch playlist. Yeah, let me mention a couple of songs. So legally, we'll have to put right. on there. Um, yeah, Chop Suey was their big. You definitely know. Chop I know Suey. Chop Suey. Okay. Uh, do you know Toxicity? No. Toxicity, great song. Probably that first time that, that shows how times were back then. I didn't know Toxicity was a word. And oh I told boy! Them, I was like, did they just combine toxic and city? These Armenian guys. <laughs> we have we have such a way with words, and yeah, I mean. Give it a few years. Now it's like the word of the year. Word, yeah, it's all anyone, uh, all anyone can say. But yeah, I, I won't. I won't bore you with more system of a down. But yo, check them out. They're the best. Um, do you want to do a read, or do we want to continue the underrated conversation? Uh, let's do a read and then continue the underrated conversation. Uh, fellas, you know we don't like to talk about our balls. I mean, I hope you don't like to talk about your balls. Nobody wants to hear you talk about your balls. Stop talking about your balls. Right. It's like your fa- balls and fantasy. Teams. Yes. No yes. one wants to hear it, bro. <laughs> Do you think balls are, are underrated? They are under a lot of the body. That's true. And so a lot of the times they're under cared for. Uh-oh. Take care of your balls. Uh, and to help you do that, Ballsy is here to help. Uh we're big on taking care of ourselves, keeping up our hygiene, making sure that we are not disgusting human beings. We're stupid. We're not disgusting. Yeah, uh, I'm hygiene. Willing to, I'm willing to bet a lot of you uh, don't take the necessary steps to care for yourself in the way that you should as a uh, a cultured man. You deserve it, it, too. White boy summer. Elevate yourself. Take care of yourself. The, yeah, the, the only principle we will borrow from that. We'll right. Take an isolated <laughs> sentence from Chet Hanks. The idea of being better and taking right. care of yourself. Right. Stop being gross. Start giving yourself the care that you need. And that's where Ballsy comes in. Ballsy offers a full line of male hygiene products, including their infamous Ball Guard Ball Deodorant. It's a liquid powder that reduces sweat, irritation, and odor in all the places where you don't want that crap. Uh, it quickly dries as a mess-free powder and goes on with a nice cooling sensation. Uh, they've also got freshing sprays, balms, cologne. Uh, the cologne is called Nut Rub. We like to enjoy uh, a little laugh, a little chuckle at that name. Uh, the names are laughable, but I can confirm the products are fantastic. I'm crazy about that charcoal wash. Are you? I am crazy about it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm big on the uh, the the um, the. Uh, the the one that I just mentioned the, the the powder like the 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 lotion powder okay that stuff's great hey check this out what do you what does Pete call his ballsy ball guard small guard <laughs> uh m- sure uh, <laughs> Peter Peter ball guard it's like Peter Sarsgaard. That doesn't. God, God damn it. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the body wash with the activating charcoal is DJ's favorite. I also love the uh, the beeswax uh, cologne. Yeah, the beeswax, beeswax, beeswax cologne, cologne is really good. Hey, uh, what does beeswax. Peter Sarsgaard call his wife? Hardly know her. Maggie. He's married to Maggie. Okay, Gillen. cool. Wait, really? Yeah. Who knows? Oh, cool. Um, uh, the weather's getting warmer, and you do not want to fa- find yourself a victim of swamp ass like Kyle Chandler uh, in Dripping Springs. We'll get to Kyle Chandler Kyle later. Kyle face experiences. <laughs> yeah, Kyle swamp, Chandler swamp. might want to get some of that uh, ball guard deodorant stuff and just rub it on his face because yeah. that man is moist. Uh, go to ballsybrand.com. That's B-A-L-L-S-Y brand.com and use promo code WASHED20. That's WASHED20 for 20% off uh, and start treating your family jewels like royalty. That's ballsybrand.com. WASH20 for 20% off. Hey, uh, what do you call, what does Peter Sarsgaard call the 2011 American superhero film that he was in? 2011? Yeah. The Dark Knight Rises. Nah, Green Lantern. Oh. 
I'm going to get off this Peter Sars guard. <laughs> yeah, <paper>. please do. <laughs> we can uh, talk about underrated things. All right, so the the rules should be audience score under 70 for it to be considered underrated. Because there's a lot of things I like. Like, there was uh, Rampage. When I started to watch King Kong, the whatever the, the King Kong movie we watched, I was like, I, gener- I generally don't like these movies. Mm-hmm. But... You know what monster movie I really liked, and I don't think it was a monster movie because they were just animals. Oh Rampage. no, but that's definitely a, that's definitely a monster movie. Right? The, yeah. The, the animals were too big. <laughs> that's right. So, it, I mean, they're not to be confused with Mommy Two, which is like a monster of a movie, but yes, where it contains monsters in the industry. But I was like Rampage. That's an underrated movie. That mm-hmm. is because it's, it's a monster movie I would rewatch. I don't feel that we talk about it enough. Let me see. Rampage is probably coming in at, oh, it's like 74 on Rotten Tomatoes. That's what I would have 73. it. 73. Yeah, right. So it's probably rated. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Right where it is. So everyone else likes Rampage as much as I like it. For <laughs> some reason, my brain thought that maybe it didn't. And you move on. We can, we can, uh, we should definitely not take into account the critic score for these underrated movies because like nobody nobody cares nobody knows like yeah you the the only time that a critic's opinion is considered is right when the movie comes out or when it's that really mean guy who's the mean guy that snips out movies that everyone loves oh fuck that guy and then he's so yeah he said get out was bad (laughs) (laughs) he was just like i forget what he put he was it, it was gonna be like one of the first modern hundreds on Rotten yeah. Tomatoes or whatever. And he was like, not if I can help it. Right. I found it uninteresting. <laughs> I was like, how did you not find that interesting? Yeah, it's uh that guy can go to hell. But things actually are underrated. Right. We we want to Have like obviously uh establish like sort of a baseline of what we would consider underrated. Actually underrated. Okay. The we'll do movie. We'll do all underrated teams. Movie, T V show, two actors Two actresses, 18 more actresses, a kid, three musical artists, uh, two producers, and uh, one Kardashian's bank account. Okay. Okay. Start with what is your all underrated team movie? My all underrated team movie. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to say. I'm going to say Whiplash. Whiplash is just not enough people talking about Whiplash. Super. That was the. Um, we obviously love that, that. Nick Cannon played drums? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. No, that was Drumline. Oh. Right. Whiplash rules. See, you don't even know what we're talking about, which means that it's underrated. Who played. And it was the kid from Jennifer's Body? Uh, was... No, it's a kid from Spider Man. Uh, all right. Which one? Tom Holland? Uh, no, uh, uh, Andrew Garfield. Interesting. Interesting. And and then the uh, the uh, the instructor. Oh, I remember that. He the instru- the, the instructor the guy. The instructor guy is Paul the guy. Reiser. From, no, no, it's the guy from the uh, the uh, the snowman. Oh, Stellan Skarsgård. No, Michael Fassbender. Oh, have you seen Frank? The uh, Frank Barone. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen Frank? It's a movie where. Michael Fassbender plays a. It's with him, Donald Gleason, and Maggie Gyllenhaal, wife of Peter Sarsgaard. He was probably on set when they were. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably on the set the whole time. But Frank is a musician. They're a band called like the Surf and Burfs. It's a. What? It's, it's crazy. Yeah. This is. But this is. This can't qualify as underrated. Okay. Because too many people know it. <laughs> but there's a band called the Surf and Burfs. And. Um, Donald Gleason plays an aspiring musician, and he just wants to be in a band, and he joins this crazy band, and the the lead singer is Frank, and everyone's drawn to this guy, and it's Michael Fassbender wearing this huge paper mache head. It's a crazy movie. Okay, Maggie, it's it's one of the. I'm I'm not a huge fan of Maggie Gyllenhaal. Same, but not underrated. Right, but I, she was good in that movie. And he and uh, she and Donald Gleason have a very adversarial relationship. But at the end of the movie, they get together and they play a song, and it is great. But Michael Fassbender's in that. Paul Reiser plays the dad. Mm-hmm. Dumping 
raisinets yeah, that's right. into popcorn. Mm-hmm. I miss doing that. I'm going to do that at Spiral. We're going to treat Spiral like a premiere. How dude. close are you to getting back to the movies? I mean, I'm going to be vaccinated quite soon. Not to brag. Not to brag. Shut out. Coughing. <laughs> Uh, Having that asthma, man. I I I thought about it for uh, Godzilla versus Kong, but man, not ready. We're we're gonna have a Godzilla versus Kong conversation soon. Uh, so let's fly through this. My underrated movie, Singing in the Rain. Okay. It's old as shit. I've never seen it. Cool, that works. But I know of people who like <laughs> That's it. That's right. I know of people that counts who like it. Uh, what's your all underrated TV show? All underrated TV show, um, Scrubs. We talked about it this week. Oh, Scrubs is mine as well. Oh, wow. Look yeah. at that. Can you believe it got canceled and they moved it to ABC? Those seasons. It got canceled like twice. Those seasons. Three times. Very underrated. That's right. The seasons Dave with Franco. Dave, the Dave Franco seasons, those are the best seasons. St- stacked. <laughs> those, yeah. Cast, absolutely stacked. What happened to the girl, the the lead from that show? I thought she was going to be a star. She's Sarah on, Chalk? She's on Scrubs, the new cast, the new uh, Oh, um, Alison Brie? Was she in that? Yeah. She was... Yeah, yeah she plays Trudy. Mm-hmm. All right, let's do two actors. Underrated. I got... Uh, what's... Why well, can't I think of his can't, name? Can't even think of his name means he's underrated. Tom Hardy. I couldn't think of his oh, name. Okay, that's right. Couldn't yeah. think of his name. Uh, and bootleg Tom Hardy. Logan, yeah, Paul I mean, like Ryan. that. I think the, that if if Tom Hardy is underrated, you automatically have to qualify bootleg Tom Hardy as being underrated because oh, okay. he is attached to a guy who is underrated. What's his name? Uh, Donald Gleason. Logan. Paul. I legitimately have Logan Paul Ryan written down, but that's not. But <laughs> Paul Ryan is. I know who Paul Ryan is, and no, uh, Logan something Green, maybe. Yes, Logan Green. Cool. We got it. Uh, underrated actor, mm-hmm. uh, Adam Sandler in a serious role. Oh, very good. Mm-hmm. Now we're cooking. All right. How about, all right. You got another one? <laughs> Peter Dante in a serious <laughs> role. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Nah, I don't want to do it. I was going to say. All right, let's just go let's scrap this idea. We'll keep this part in the podcast. But let's just start over. I feel like we got I to just a good like, place. I literally stopped breathing for like two seconds as I just laughed. <laughs> talk about, let's talk about underrated people. We, we found some Underrated actors in the Happy, happy Madison universe. <laughs> let's do an underrated thing and everything is about the Happy Madison universe. All right. So this is cool. This will be the first time in brunch history that we got, we're not doing we're not doing the fucking King Kong review. We're definitely not getting we're definitely not getting to the King Kong review. Definitely not. That's not gonna be in this podcast. Probably Ever. probably in any of them. Yeah, no. we're just that's we got no time for that. So <laughs> l- let's now plan how we can do the segment we were just doing better. So let's do all underrated. All underrated, and everything's got to be in the Happy Madison thing. But we're going to set this up for the clip because we've got to drive people to the Patreon. Okay. So if you're listening to the podcast, you're going to know this is going to be all Happy Madison <laughs> stuff. But if you're just seeing the clip, this, so th- this is for your friends. Mm-hmm. All right? Let's – um. Okay. Oh, so it's got to be Happy Madison stuff, but we're not going to say it's Happy Madison stuff. Hello, who gives you an inside? Who gives you a front row seat like this podcast? I mean, there's no there's no podcast that has more transparency than this one. And that's for worse or for worse. <laughs> okay, let me pull up the uh, Happy Madison uh, filmography. Oh, I can I can. Look at the critical reception for all Happy Madison all in one place. What a what a handy Wikipedia page. Can you believe the internet? <laughs> right. Oh man. The I'll tell you, the, the Metacritic ratings for all the Happy Madison movies are so bad. Really? Yeah. Why isn't there There are two 
two movies in the history of Happy Madison that have hit the 60 benchmark. And both of them were, uh, like, the ones that t- were trying to be serious, I guess. What the hell? I was Which trying- I guess is, like, I guess tells you the sense of humor of, uh, of like, movie critics. Mm. Never go to a movie critic for a review on a, on a comedy. Yo, do you know who produced... Wait, did he direct? Do you know who directed... Bucky Larson. Steven Spielberg. Born to be a star. Steven Spielberg. A man named Tom Brady. Really? So it just says, yeah, you go down and it says right next to it, Tom Brady. And it's hyperlinked, so you're like, that's got to be Tom Brady. Different guy. Okay. So let's, so we're going to do. Set up the clip. Okay, we're going to. Okay, we're going to do our all underrated teams movie. Two actors, mm-hmm. two actresses. Start okay. again. <laughs> Start again. All underrated team movie. Two actors, two actresses, one musical artist. All underrated team movie. Two actors, two actresses, one musical artist, and anything else? Want to do? Sport? Sure. Okay. All right. Underrated movie. <clears throat> Go. Uh underrated movie. Um okay. Uh I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. That was legitimately mine. Really? That was legitimately <laughs> mine. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Okay, man. This is uh, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry as a fantastic movie. I don't know about that. <laughs> but <laughs> Funny I mean, answer to give. Let me. Who? Okay, I'm gonna go. The do over. The do over. Yeah, you don't is, know about the do over. It's is, a 2016 American buddy action comedy directed that, by Stephen Brill and written by Kevin Barnett and Chris Pappas. Is that with uh with Jennifer Aniston? Probably, but the film follows David Spade, Adam Sandler. That it's uh, Catherine Hans in it. Ah. Uh, Luis Guzman's in it. So. Doesn't look like Jennifer Aniston's in that one. It's the second in a four year deal between. In a four movie deal? Four movie deal between yeah, Adam Sandler same, and Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, got that. All right. Let's do two underrated actors. Two underrated actors. Um. Okay. Uh. Adam Sandler in a serious role. Ooh, I like that. And uh, Jack Nicholson. Ooh, Jack Nicholson. Very underrated. People people forget about Jack Nicholson because he just doesn't act people anymore. People just know him for going to sports games, right? And Sitting on courtside at the Lakers. He's doing all that. Rose colored glasses. Not which, bad at his day job. Right. Pretty good. Check him out if you haven't. Underrated actors. I'm going to go with. Jeez. Uh, Rob Schneider. Underrated in a serious role. That's right. Yeah. And tackling some some tough subjects, too, like in the world of male gigolos. Right. Sex sex workers. Mm-hmm. Rob Schneider and I'm going to go Peter Dante in a oh. serious role. OK. OK. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what about uh, how about this one? Uh Kevin James. Kevin the, James. Th- that man has range. You got yeah. the the King of Queens, and then he just played a Nazi in a movie. Who did he? Yes. Yikes. A neo Nazi. Yikes. Yeah. So talk about some what range. What movie was there. that? Uh, it was like a recent movie. It was like a gritty sort of independent movie, and he played an, an, uh, a a neo Nazi who like takes a family hostage. So let's say overrated Kevin James in a serious role because that sounds like more serious role than Th- I want. Then we, Kevin then we're bargaining playing. for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a pass. All right. <laughs> two actresses, two underrated actresses. I would say uh, two underrated. Jennifer Aniston definitely won. Mm-hmm. And I agree with that. And why can't I think of her name? Modern Family, Claire Bowen. Yeah. Claire Julie Bowen. Bowen. Yeah. She played Claire in Modern Family? Sure. See? I mean, underrated show. 
No, it doesn't qualify. No. Um, yeah, so like she was in Modern Modern Family. Uh, I can't remember her in anything else. She, she did a movie with, um, with, was it Gary Player? Was that who it was? What? Gary Player. The guy who says, Grizzly Adams did have a beard. That wasn't Gary Player. That was a different, it was a famous, it was in uh, Happy Gilmore. Oh, uh, Jack Nicholas. Yes. Oh, very close. Not Jack to be confused. Nichols. Jack, who is Jack Nicholson? son? Jack Nicholson. son. Okay. His son. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, so that's your two actresses. Uh-huh. I will uh say Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore, underrated. Underrated in the sense that, like, I think most people know who Drew, Drew Barrymore is, but people aren't so like, oh, necessarily a person from. He's just not that into you, right? Right. Uh, people may not be totally aware that Drew Barrymore has the career that she does, which is why I say un- underrated. Yes, she was in um she was in the Star the early Star Wars. Yes, she. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it again. She was uh <clears throat> people don't realize that she had the career that she was. She was in the the early uh the the one with the alien um yes. Star Wars. Yes, the Baskin Robbins deal with the famous Baskin Robbins, everybody remember that? Mm-hmm. No. It was they made like peanut butter ice cream. Do you yeah. not remember that? No. Yeah. It was okay. like a big uh it was like a Dip and Dots sponsorship thing. Okay. But that was like huge product placement in Star Wars where she's friends with – she plays the the mom and the kids are friends with – I don't know. You've seen Star Wars. I haven't okay. seen those yeah. movies. Jar Jar. Sure. Um, and then my second actress is Jessica Biel. Not to, to run too hard into, uh, into I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry, but like she absolutely knocked it out of the park. And I can't remember her. It feels like she's. I know that she's married to uh, to Lance Bass, but I can't think of many other reasons why or like things that she's been in. It's just like she, she only crushed it. And I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Well, she was in S Club Seven. Oh, okay. That was her. Okay. Like, that was how she came up. Oh, it was okay. Her and Beverly Mitchell were in S Club Seven, and then Beverly Mitchell ended up being in Saw Two. She's one of the yeah okay she is so yeah so like um, I mean obviously widely talented got uh, singing dancing yes. actressing and marrying yes so just a quadruple threat and we'll have to check she plays a firefighter in I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry I'm wondering if there's a Steve Buscemi type thing going on there ooh like yeah. like where she was a firefighter in she IRL a, yes oh, okay nice. I wonder if I now pronounce in... you Chuck and Larry was like the prequel do... to uh, King of Staten Island? Or if they were just casting actual firefighters for that. And maybe Jessica Biel was an, a firefighter and after she did S Club 7, and then this was her break into acting. Okay. All right. Let's do uh, underrated firefighters. I'm going <laughs> to steal your answer. I'm going to say Jessica Biel. If underrated firefighters? A, if she was a firefighter. Okay. Uh... Because we know her most for being an et that's right uh i'll say um steve buscemi yes people forget that he was a firefighter he was in king kong versus skull island was he yeah he was he plays the bilber's dad oh okay yeah um so we do have we done actors actresses firefighters Mm -hmm. let's do uh we haven't done movies yet uh how about Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star. Underrated movie? Yeah. I mean, it's not my favorite, but I guess that would speak to the fact that it's underrated. That's right. We got we got it's got to be things that we don't like. <laughs> That's how right. There's just I mean, if you like a movie, it's not underrated. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> oh, what what a weird fucking episode we're doing right now. Okay. Do we should we do a read? What about uh, underrated mode of transportation? Ooh, the ship from Dunkirk? Murder Mystery. Oh, I was gonna say Dunkirk because people don't know it's real. Yes, those were very that, that real. Doesn't they, apply they cast here. real ships in that movie. It's I was a regular. Say, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. I was gonna say a Segway. Ooh, pretty good. 
if you listened to our episode about beautiful bald men, you will know that some men are bald. Nothing wrong with it. Nope. But men can't have a choice as they begin to lose their hair. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. So if you want to do something about that, I think keeps might be for you. You know, it mm-hmm. might be a keeper. It might be a try and then a keep. And I bet if it starts as a try, it becomes a keep. Because two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. It's no laughing matter. It is not. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. It's got a convenient virtual doctor consultation you can do. Medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. It's got low cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month and Keeps offers generic versions. Consider, two out of three dudes. By the time they're turning 35, whoa, what happened to my hair? They could be experiencing some sort of hair loss. That means that if we had a third person on this podcast. They could be experiencing some sort of hair loss. That's right. Do you Wait, know that- technically that means that two of us would be experiencing some sort of ball. Uh, hair loss that's true so we've got to make sure there's so it's not... a real mystery situation if we bring in a third guy if we bring in more people will it decrease our chances of uh, suffering that's, a, hair that's loss? a good point well i'll tell you this more than 50 million men in the u.s suffer from male pattern baldness so if we bring in 50 million men with male pattern baldness they're, they're gonna all, all gonna... shoot right so we could be in trouble but you can do something about your male pattern baldness you know what i'm thinking keeps that's right it offers a simple stress-free way to keep your hair convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months you don't even have to leave your home low-cost treatments start at just ten dollars per month and keeps offers generic versions there's discreet packaging and proven results so if you're a little worried about ah, i don't want people to see that i want my neighbors to know that i'm balding yeah which honestly i i think that don't worry about it. just yeah take you're taking care of yourself and you should be proud of that honestly and it's not like you're alone more than 50 million men in the right. u.s suffer from male pattern baldness so you're doing something about it mm-hmm. are all of them i hope they are if that's what they choose to do because keeps offers a simple stress-free way to keep your hair keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors so keeps is Top of the line stuff for the top of the cabeza. Not underrated. Is Keeps cabeza keep, head? Yeah. Okay. Keeps is not underrated. A lot of five-star reviews. It's tough to be underrated. It's properly rated. When you are the... You know what? I would say that it's considered the best and it still might be underrated. That's Ooh. how good and legit Keeps is. Prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results. So act fast. Get on the Keeps train. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash brunch to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash brunch to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash brunch. Two out of three men Hmm. experiencing some sort of hair loss by the time they're 35. So what are you going to do about it? Keeps. That's right. Keeps. Should we do Godzilla stuff? How long is this podcast? This is a top three weird episode we've done. Yeah, it's gotten extremely weird. But I I think that we should do Godzilla. I would like to talk about it. I think there is a, a conversation to be had. And also, I don't know if you noticed this. Since we moved to Washed, our episodes have gotten a lot longer. Really? And I don't think that it's had anything to do with them. I think last week's episode was edited quite a bit. And it ended up being like 50, 55 minutes, which yeah. is about where we kind of landed most there was of the time. so much extra Pokemon. You you guys only got the funny Pokemon stuff. There was a lot of like just like genuine Pokemon boring talk. Pokemon <laughs> talk. We're not, like, none of us were saying anything that interested the other one. We were just talking about Pokemon. Are we becoming the podcast that like riffs for eight hours and then and then puts out like a 45 minute podcast? <laughs> Like, this is only the good stuff. So I, I've never wanted to be that. <laughs> Me either, especially like if people if people don't like our podcast now, we can just be like, okay, whatever. We fucking hit we hit record on a microphone and talk for forty five minutes. If you don't like it, whatever. No skin off our back. But like if we're the podcast that that like records for eight hours, like a third of a day, 
and puts out a 45 minute episode and and you guys are like this sucks yeah like that's the best stuff that we got out of a third of our day and that that'd be a real tough uh return on our time and investment which we still we put a lot of time into this but i don't understand people who do these like we've done one scripted podcast and that was the nhl preview Mm -hmm. and even that that took a while the, for, for like a 15 minute episode right, for a very <laughs> short episode if if i did a totally scripted podcast i would care so deeply that it end up being great this way it's like well sometimes also, we make each other laugh sometimes whatever it's just we're, we're just kind of hanging out in between balls <laughs> <laughs> right? uh yeah so we did watch godzilla versus kong versus ford versus ferrari versus freddy versus, versus freddy. jason gotta get freddy in there versus um uh uh versus uh, it was a uh, versus it was uh the Isley brothers against yeah, that's right. and fire um so we did it um i'm interested to see where we land on it because we're very much a podcast that is like hey judge a movie based on the expectations that you have going in i have the hard the, the most difficult genre i think for me to pay attention to is monster movies. I check out immediately and I definitely checked out of this immediately. So I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a good person to review this, but we've done monster movies before. And I always feel that way where I'm like, what? It's, it's a bunch of monsters. I know what's going to happen. They're, they're bigger than everybody else. (laughs) And everybody else is like, Oh, we're so small. What are we going to do about these monsters? And it's like, well, it just all depends. Does the monster want to kill you or not? Because if the monster wants to kill you, you can't do anything about it. Uh, the the one thing that I will say about this movie is that it is the most predictable movie of all time. Yes. Oh my God. They end up so they end up fighting at the end. Godzilla versus. That's not true. They, um, they, they kind of fight. Uh, they fight a lot. They fight basically for three quarters of the movie. I couldn't tell at points. I was like, are these different? Are they? Are they? Are there new guys being brought in? Is Godzilla like tagging in a buddy? Is this no? A they just they thing? have different rounds. Like they they even say at one point they're like, uh, some, whatever monster takes round two, like oh takes round two, and it's like okay, so you guys are just gonna be like this is a, a heavyweight battle with just multiple rounds, and I'm I'm totally cool with that. Um, the worst part, the worst thing, the worst thing that a monster movie could do, especially a monster movie called Godzilla versus Kong, is to make you wait fifty minutes. For the monsters to fight. Yeah. Because the thing about this movie is that all the human stuff fucking sucks. Oh, my God. I cared <laughs> I cared 0% about any, any of, of the it. actors, any of the people. I learned after the movie that one of those guys is a scars guard. Mm-hmm. Who, know? Who knew? I That's, didn't know that. Th- you did know that? Yeah. That's the guy from Big Little Lies. Yep. Didn't know that. I know He is like the scars guard other than he's like the scars guard child. Okay, because we're, I mean, we're going Stellan number one. Mm-hmm, Stellan of course. always number one. But I was like, is, is this the guy from It? Who is this guy? And nope. they have. That's his brother. Is, uh, is her name uh, Aiza Gonza- Gonzalez? Is that her name? Sure. The, the uh, woman from I Care a Lot and Baby Driver, John Hamm's partner and Baby Driver. She plays. Uh, Hotshot scientist they bring in. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like the the like basically the person that runs the company essentially. And she is every character that happens in any monster movie, which is they bring in somebody else to help. And Who this doesn't person get is it? Immediately, so rude <laughs> yeah. to everybody at all times. Like, how did you rise to this position of power? She comes in and they're like, "Hey, welcome aboard." And she's like, "Get out of my way." Let me guess. Yeah. You guys are doing this, but I'm like. Try to create a good work environment. Why are you such an asshole to these people? <laughs> right. Like, these people that have been working with this monster, like, oh, this gigantic you. monster thank- that could squash you in a second. Thank God you're here. We need your help. And she's like, let me guess. You need my help. Like, yes. Please be nice to them. They're trying to welcome you. Uh, I couldn't. Yeah. I just couldn't pay attention to anything. All the All the human stuff fucking sucks. There's no question about that. The good thing, though. Is that there's very little human stuff. Extremely little human there's stuff. There's very little human stuff, and the very and the humans are very little in comparison to the monsters. You got Millie. You got Belsnickel. Shout out Belsnickel right. being in the movie. God Was damn. very excited about that. That that king. And uh, the, there's a deaf girl 
who is friends with King Godzilla Kong. or King, King Kong. Kong? King Kong. King Kong. At the end, she at the end she says to King Kong, "Hey, after they've fought and basically almost killed each other a million times, she's like, "Hey, just a heads up, you guys shouldn't be fighting each other. That's not the enemy." And King Kong lets out the biggest. Fuck! Like what? If, now you tell me. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just him roaring, yeah. but he's just like, oh my god, <laughs> really? You mean who ends up being the bad guy? I couldn't follow it. Uh, like, spoiler alert: people? there's there's a no, there's a robot. I there's a robot Godzilla hmm. who comes in, and that thing is fucking badass. The only part I really that liked, thing whips ass. The only thing part I really liked was when Godzilla and King Kong are fighting. They're they're deep into the fight. And they get in each other's faces. They've been fighting. Oh, there's like a longing sexual stare, basically. They look at each other, and then they just scream at each other <laughs> for a little bit, which I think is such a great thing to add to a fight scene, where in the middle of your physical altercation, just argue with each other right? for a little bit. Yeah. These two monsters that we can't understand, they've, just have them argue. They've literally, 99% percent of the screen time that they've shared together have just been them trying to merci- mercilessly kill each other. Yeah. And then they uh, come face to face and they're just like, hey, we haven't really... We really got to know each other a little bit. Like, what do let's, you sound like? Wait, like, let's let's talk this thing out, but like, not in an amicable way. Let's no, they, scream they get this very out. Close to each other, they scream. Then I think King Kong dies, kind of, sort of. Yeah, he just like dies for a little bit, and then he gets up and he talks to his friend, and she's like, "Hey, Godzilla, pretty good egg, actually." <laughs> yeah, um, they're a they're a, uh, the the fight scenes are awesome. Which that's all that really matters. The fight scenes are awesome. Um, one of the best things about the fight scenes is that like they legitimately treat them like they are uh, pay per view wrestling matches. Yeah, they they do like actual wrestling moves. Like at one point, I'm pretty sure that like Godzilla like throws uh, or like pushes. King Kong, like he's, you know how like in wrestling matches where they push them towards the rope, yeah, yeah. Where, and like they're like expecting him to bounce off and come back towards them, like they do that with King Kong, like into a building, and he's like, oh, and he, he like hits like the turnbuckle. <laughs> it's great. I went back and watched because apparently there's a 1962 movie called. It's either Godzilla versus King Kong. I still don't know what this movie is called, but it's it's called some iteration of these two against each other Mm -hmm. and i watched a little bit of it and let me tell you you want to take technology has come a long way (laughs) you bet buddy because all it is is i mean it's it's just like life-sized people just like humans they're just like throwing rocks at each other legitimately (laughs) like throwing like big boulders and tell you what stonks on clarinets in monster movies very down okay because in these movies you got a full orchestra going crazy <laughs> there's like a the, it's a trans-siberian orchestra you got system of a down going it's a, all this insane it's like a mad max fury road got the guy hanging off just like playing just hell like yeah shredding the whole time as they're fighting each that other that seems way cooler like this movie did the like the the classic like 2020 <laughs> like no, so that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. this was like huge, big sounds. Monster movies back then would just be like a clarinet, like that sounds way cooler. It's <laughs> like kind of mischievous <laughs> stuff, and I'm like, it's not mischievous. They're destroying everything. Uh, so I think that like I don't remember the conversation that we had on Godzilla, the the previous Godzilla, because we reviewed that on the podcast mainly because Kyle Chandler was in it, looking sweaty as hell. By the yeah. way, Kyle Chandler comes in. Hot sweat, Hanks. Literally just, hot. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chet Glaze. Yeah. No. Ch- uh, what? Did I, uh, sweat, Hanks. Sw- sweat, Hanks. Celebrating wet boy summer. <laughs> yep. Chet Glaze. I like that one. Chet Glaze. I like that one as well. I, I had a bunch of them. Oh, uh, sweat Midler was the big one. Sweat Midler. Well, Sweat Midler is my new music project. Hell yeah. Because I, that's too good of a name to not make it into uh, some sort of electronic dance group. Um, <laughs> So be on the lookout for Sweat Midler tracks at some point. But what was it? Oh, uh, Sweaty Sweater playing Yellow (laughs) Lead Sweater. That was a big one. Pretty good. Pretty good. And in the time that you could say all those names, that was how much 
Kyle Chandler was in the movie. That's what I was. That's what I was gonna say. The uh, he shows the, his sweaty face. He hugs a couple of times, and then that's it. That he is literally not in this movie, and I'm pretty sure that like they were like, "Yo, this is the one scene that you're in. We got to make you a full movie's worth of sweaty in this one scene." How do you think scene. they do like touch ups for him in between scenes? Like, they Can just, we get a little more sweat on him. They just no. they put him in a dunk tank, and then they <laughs> sorry to bring up uh, PTSD with dunk tanks, but like. That is his makeup room. He sits on top of a dunk tank, and they pelt the target with balls. Does he go? Maybe he's on natural. I mean, I think he's. I think he is just a naturally sweaty guy. Yeah, but I do. Maybe there's a. Maybe there's. He, he, maybe uh, he comes as part of like his his deal. He gets a, a misting person. That'd be where really like cool. every every in between scenes, they he just gets misted with like a spray bottle. Should we make our summer look? Our summer twenty one look. Just involve sweat. Just like a light. Mist on it. Just right. get one of those little bottles with the fan. You know what I'm talking about. And uh, just spray your face before you take pics. Just look a little. Just have a light. Just put on a little base. How about this for a uh, this for a uh, Kyle Chandler nickname? Mm-hmm. Father Kyle Misty. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, have you seen? Speaking of the uh, King Kong thing, so King Kong is a gorilla, right? Yes. Giant ape. Okay. What is God? What is Godzilla? A uh, Titan. Although oh I. Oh my I, God! The lower third was the funniest thing in the world. So uh, Godzilla breaks out of something, right? Yes. And then it's on the news, and they think that, that well, he doesn't break out of something. He like he he breaks it. He breaks the the facility or whatever. All right. Smashes so the facility. The lower third. The CNN lower third says. Godzilla no longer Titan Savior. Ooh. Because they realize, like, ooh, maybe Godzilla's up to something. So the lower third says, Godzilla no longer Titan Savior. And then underneath it, it says, eight dead in attack. <laughs> I would lead with, Godzilla kills eight. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, breaking news. Godzilla's fallen out of favor. Oh, no. Why? Did he say something problematic? <laughs> I mean, no, he killed eight people. I do. Oh. I do, like, wonder that, that like, how many deaths... Is Godzilla responsible for? Because in the in the last one that we saw with Kyle Chandler and M- Millie Bobby Brown, we and talked Randy about Havens. this. V- correct. They just dis- he destroys the entire city of All Boston. All it is Boston destruction. Literally the entire city, and unless they evacuated the entire city, he is responsible for hundreds of deaths. Yeah, and we saw it in this movie as well. Like both of these guys are fighting in like downtown, packed Hong Kong. Just taking down buildings left and right. There, the 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 mass casualty toll has to be in like the tens of thousands. Do did you care that they didn't have one win? No. Um. I I mean I think that that was the the obvious conclusion was that like no they weren't gonna they weren't gonna kill one of them. You can't have a monster. You can't have monster movie people want one to win over the other like you can't have a, a monster movie fan pick a favorite monster it's like having a parent pick a favorite monster yeah do you but do you think the i think the better question is is that like did they handle the uh competitive balance correctly between godzilla and king kong because obviously it seems to me like godzilla kind of kicked king kong's ass correct which should have happened yeah godzilla is so much more powerful than king kong Godzilla is like has like nuclear abilities. Yes. More uh, Godzilla can Godzilla fly? No. Neither can King Kong. By the way, <laughs> that was my follow up. <laughs> but uh, the the way that they addressed the competitive balance was that they gave King Kong an axe that had nuclear powered abilities. This is the least. I've seen a movie that I've yeah, seen. Yeah, 100%. I don't you, remember you a second. You look the so only confused. Thing I remember <laughs> is the, um, the guy from If Beale Street Could Talk says to Bell Snickle, hey, do you want to have your first drink? And then the kid dumps alcohol on the board. And, and that's how something. they beat the robot. And that's yeah. how they defeat the robot. Which is a hilarious conclusion to, like, the most powerful robot and sophisticated uh, technology in the history of the world. It's just them dumping some water on it, and it malfunctions. Uh, very funny. Yeah, I just... I, monster movies, man. I, I'm, I'm definitely not being a hater, but... I thought this was, a, like, a fun watch. Like, it was what I expected, 
in in all the good ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was definitely not uh, definitely not perfect. But like anybody who's like the script was shit, it's like cool. Uh, who cares? Well, that, that is the last thing I'm yeah. going to do, and it's also why I feel probably hypocritical being like man they did brian tyree henry dirty because what a well they did do brian weird, tyree awful henry. character but like he was also bad he he was bad but like he should not have been in that role yeah and not because but he's like, too th- not because he's too good for it. it's just like it's not who he plays like and, and like at, at the risk of like trying to typecast him like he is like a like an intimidating guy who like is good in in serious roles like to have him be the goofy guy that you pair with the kids. That's like the like uh, whoever played Ziggy in uh, the Wire. The Wire, who was then in It. Yeah, like that character. Yeah, like, or that that actor. But like, like even him, make we... him freak out the whole time. That's right. Yeah. Uh. So like it's just like but I just hated that storyline so much. The movie did the movie did a disservice to Brian Tyree Henry, and Brian Tyree Henry did a disservice to the movie. Right. Like didn't do himself. There was no winner there. <laughs> yeah. That I mean, but again, when it, when people say, "Oh, the like this movie was stupid or the script was bad or whatever," I'm gonna say I couldn't pay attention to it. It couldn't hold my attention because I just know it's too huge monsters fighting each other i'm not gonna say like the movie was bad or anything because that's just what that movie is it's right a, it's it's a bunch of chaos happening the whole time i'm not expecting it to be right i'm not expecting it to move me it's so like uh the the big thing that everybody's been dunking on for a while is like the uh the game spot review which says uh, in Godzilla versus Kong, a giant lizard and a giant ape fight, and that's the best thing that we can say about it. Which, like, that is what everybody's going into this movie wanting. They yeah. want to watch Godzilla fight King Kong. Uh, and it says, on the other hand, if you're also expecting a halfway intelligent script or a set of human characters who act like thinking beings with discernible motivations beyond be an X spot so Y plot event can concur, you'll be massively disappointed. I was uh, not. Right. I was not expecting If those you're things. going into that movie expecting any of those things, you don't know how this works because uh, you should not be expecting any of that. Like, I think that you can expect that stuff in the like the Godzilla movie and the King Kong movie on their own. Like this is a like those movies sort of set up the the Godzilla and the King Kong like universe or like how they come to to ruin and wreck shit. But like once you get past that uh, that initial movie and this is a sequel to one of those, all we want to see is the things fight. And uh, they did a fine enough job being like, here's somewhat of a plot. Now fight. <laughs> yeah. They, it was, it's all, it's, that's always what I see, at least in monster movies, other than rampage. Great movie. Um, it just, everything is a means to an end. Right. Everything is just so they can make the, the monsters fight. Everyone's mad at this article. This was a game spot article. Mm hmm. I until you said GameSpot, I thought it was on GameStop.com, and I was like, "Ooh, this is not going to be good for, for my stocks." stocks. <laughs> but you want to buy up some GameSpot stock? That's got to be even cheaper than. Oh, it's, at its all-time low. What do they so. say? Buy the dip. That's buy the right. dip. Yeah. No, yeah, buy the dip. GameSpot underrated version of GameStop. The we only know that everyone's mad about it. I think it just seems this is a good stock for us to get into. Shout out Robin Hood. Good, co- good t- content content idea. We go to Wall Street, and we're just eating fun dip, and we're just yelling, buy the dip. 